I was, uh, I was growing up in Houston, and uh, there was a mentally challenged man in our neighborhood. And I was five years old, wasn't even in school yet. And he got me and another kid down the street and took us to the bio and, and did some, some things that were inappropriate. That was my first experience. I myself didn't think any big deal of it at the time. I was five years old. Uh, completely forgot about it till 2001. You know, just, just forgot about it. Never thought about it. And, um, you know, I can't say that it had any, like, terrible effect on me that I was conscious of. But through years of therapy, I'm told by professionals that it definitely had an effect on me. And it kind of set up, maybe, possibly, what happened to me as a teenager with the priest. I never went to a, a school that wasn't a Catholic school. I went to a grade school for eight years and then a, an all-boys college preparatory school in Houston, St. Thomas, for four years. I graduated in 70. So Vietnam was still going on. And this is where the days of draft cards and pulling a number. And I had a bad number. So I was afraid I was going to get drafted, sent to Vietnam, and killed. So my father died when I was 13, and I asked my mother to go to the judge and ask for money for us to take a trip of the Orient. And I wanted to see something of the world before I died. So we went on this six-week package tour with the same group of people. There was about 35 of us, and two of the people in the group were priests, an older one and a young one. So during the six weeks of this trip, the young priest groomed me. Of course, I knew nothing of grooming in those days. I was a, a pretty innocent. Um, I actually turned 18 in Tokyo, Japan, and, and I was a very innocent 18. And uh, so I thought this priest was really a good guy. Just met him, didn't know him long, but became buddies with him. And um, we got back from the trip, and uh, I had friends, in. St. Louis area. Anyway, that's where he was based. And I want to say up until this time, I had dealt with hundreds of priests and religious and never had a problem. But I went to see this guy, planned to spend two nights with him. And on the first night, he, you know, started like hugging me. And when it was time to go to bed, it was in the same bed. And all kind of red, red flags went off in my head. And I mean, I knew immediately that this wasn't right. And uh, I just sort of protected myself as best I could and kind of played for time. And in the morning, I shot out of there and didn't, didn't go back. The second night um, that I was supposed to be spending with him, I was actually on the streets of some strange neighborhood in a strange city, you know. There was my friend and a couple of his friends were driving. We, we just leave the church, and this guy says, why in the hell did you go see Father Pavley? He's a pervert. I about died. It was common knowledge to these people, and I never saw it. That experience made me leave the Catholic Church for years. I mean, I just didn't know priests were human beings. And it never dawned on me that they were just men with normal feelings. Um, I, I knew right away that that had a, a profound effect. It destroyed my faith. You know, I was angry with God. I was angry with God and I was questioning if He was even there. You know, you go through you know, sometimes you see, you know, children die or something, and you go through that phase of, if they're God, how can you let this happen? It was a spiritual destruction of the soul. I call child abuse murder because it murders the soul. You can be alive in your body, but you're, you're like a walking dead. I mean, because you're dead inside because your soul's been destroyed. I just said, God, 
you got to help me. I can't stay angry like this. It's killing me. It's killing me. i got to have some relief. Come into my life. Come into my heart, Lord. Take over. I can't handle it. Help me to forgive. And, and, and I asked, and he came. I found that by returning to my faith and uh, availing myself of the sacraments, um, for me, it's, it, the big thing is, is confession, communion, and uh, the healing of the sick. Um, these sacraments, it's, uh, they work. They work. I mean, if you ask God for help, uh, he will help you. We've got, as a society, we've got to get over this, this thing that, you know, you don't talk about it. Uh, especially in cases of, of incest, where, where it's a family secret, it's usually multi-generational, and nobody says anything. So, thank God, we are talking more about it, and, and there's more awareness about it. There's more and more help from groups like Hopeful Arts Ministry and Maria Gretti Network that just do amazing work uh, to help people find their way. I'm Miguel, and I have a voice.